If you're watching this video, then you probably are interested in learning to fly. If this is you, then I'm certain one of the top questions you have is, how much is it gonna to cost to learn to fly? So in this video, I'm gonna give you a simple and honest explanation of what you might expect to pay to earn the title, private pilot. I've been a flight instructor for over 30 years, and during this time, I've had the privilege of introducing countless people to aviation. I've seen the rising cost of flight training firsthand over three decades. When I was learning to fly in high school, I could go mow a single lawn and then go take a flying lesson. Today, you'd have to mow the whole neighborhood to take one. Sure, I understand everything in life is much more expensive than it used to be, but don't let that be your excuse to not take your next step. Becoming a pilot can be one of the most fulfilling things you do, and there is tremendous opportunity in front of you, both for a hobby or for a career. Before we get into the numbers, I wanna say there are numerous paths that you can take to earning your pilot's license, or pilot certificate, as the FAA calls it. You can do this through a local flying school, flight training academy, college or university, or even by buying your own airplane and hiring a flight instructor directly. While there are some variables with all these paths, in the end, you will end up with the exact same private pilot certificate from the FAA, regardless of which path you decide on. Every school is probably gonna be passionate that their way is the best, but the reality is all flight instructors should be training you to the same FAA standards, regardless of where you learn. Now, let's take a look at how much it could cost for you to become a private pilot. For this example, I'm gonna be using average prices for today's market here in the United States while flying a Cessna 172. You'll find these prices will vary depending on location and aircraft. You may have an opportunity to train in a smaller, older airplane such as a Cessna 150 or 152 and lower these costs. But most likely, you're gonna find yourself in a Cessna 172, a Piper Warrior or Archer. Regardless of the exact airplane, the cost should be reasonably similar. I'll be using the part 61 minimum hours for calculation, and then we're gonna use a realistic adjustment in the end. The FAA part 61 minimums are 40 hours of flight time. Of this 40 hours, the majority of your flight training will be with a flight instructor flying with you, obviously. However, you will fly a minimum of 10 hours of solo without an instructor. You will see that some schools operate under what are called part 141 rules. This lowers the FAA bare minimums to 35 hours, but it's highly unlikely you can actually get it done that fast, so in reality, this doesn't really save you any money. In my personal experience, the Part 141 Academy-style schools run a little bit higher on the rental rates as they usually have a larger infrastructure to support. Prices have continued to rise, and a recent search revealed local aircraft rental prices for me ranged anywhere from $155 an hour to $225 an hour, depending on the age, the condition, and the equipment of the plane. Flight instruction ranged anywhere from $55 an hour to $95 an hour, depending on the flight instructor's experience and the location. I did find a few Cessna 150s as low as $120 an hour though, and that could result in significant savings. So, assuming you accomplished all this in the FAA bare minimum hours, you would have rented a Cessna 172 or comparable for 40 hours, of which 10 of that would be solo flight. I'll use the median value of $190 an hour for the aircraft and a median value of $75 an hour for the instruction for the purpose of this video. So 40 hours of Cessna 172 renting at $190 an hour is $7,600. That's total airplane cost. Then you have 30 hours of flight instruction at $75 an hour, that's $2,250. You're not gonna be charged the 10 hours that you're out flying solo. So the total for the FAA minimums based on these rates is $9,850. Keep in mind, this is bare bones minimum FAA required experience. If you can accomplish it in these minimums, that's awesome. It has been done, but I'll tell you, it's just not that common. What's more common is accomplishing this level of proficiency needed by approximately 60 hours. And because of that, let's throw a reality calculation at these FAA minimums. Let's add 20 more hours of Cessna 172 rental and 45 more hours of flight instruction. What schools don't always tell you is the instructor will be charging you for all the time that they'll be with you on the clock teaching you, not just the time they're in the airplane when the engine's running and you're being charged for the plane. So it's safe to assume that before and after each flight, there's gonna be a short briefing and debriefing, totaling 30 minutes. And on some flights like a cross country, even more. So I added 25 more hours of flight instruction to this calculation, just to keep it real. 
That extra adds an additional $7,175. Can you imagine how frustrating it would be to start this process knowing that you're really gonna need an additional $7,000? So here we are with our bare bones calculation of $9,850. But our more realistic calculation based on 60 hours plus extra flight instruction totals $17,025. And that's all assuming that you can rent an airplane for $190 an hour and $75 an hour for the instruction. Now remember, find an older Cessna 150, 152, and you might be able to reduce this by a couple thousand dollars. Now, from the flight school websites that I looked at, hardly any of them mentioned the other significant expenses that you're gonna incur on this journey. I wanna make sure that you know about these because they certainly will affect your overall investment in becoming a private pilot. First off, if you've never flown in a small plane before, I highly recommend that you take an introductory flight, often called a discovery flight. This should be your very first expense and it usually costs about $150. It's a short flight with an instructor that'll introduce you to what can be expected on your first lesson. I also recommend you check out this video that we made on what to expect on your discovery flight. After taking your discovery flight and now being totally hooked on flying, because that's what's gonna happen, I'm just telling you you're gonna need some supplies and some other resources. Not necessarily all this you're gonna need in the beginning. You don't have to have all of it to take your next step, but it's certainly an expense that I want you to be aware of. First off, ground school. In addition to the flying requirements, the FAA requires that you pass a knowledge test, often referred to as a written. This is a test that can be taken before you do any training or later throughout your training. It's just gotta be completed before you take your final check ride. So to pass this knowledge test, you need to either enroll in an in-person ground school class that maybe your flight school might offer, or you can do a home study course, which is probably the most common. There are a lot of great ones out there. I'll put links to a few of those in the description below. The actual FAA test you have to take, it costs about $175. And the ground schools can vary, but I certainly think you can accomplish all this for $400. Supplies. Yes, you're going to need some supplies. Not all this right away, but here's a general list. You're gonna need a few books, some maps, pilots, we call them charts. You're gonna need an aviation calculator, probably a small kneeboard to use in the cockpit, maybe a fuel strainer and a flashlight. That should all run you less than $150. You're gonna need a headset. In the beginning, the flight school or your instructor might have an extra that you can borrow or rent, but this is pretty much a necessity. When you're starting out, you can get by with an entry-level headset for around $200 or less. Later, you're probably gonna upgrade that headset but this will easily get you through your private pilot training. Also, not required initially to get your private at all for that matter, but at some point, you're probably gonna want all your maps electronically on an iPad connected to a service that can stream valuable information directly to the cockpit. This is not required in the beginning, so I'm gonna leave it off of this calculation. But if you're interested in what I personally carry in my flight bag, you can also watch this video right here. Before you take your first solo flight, you're also going to need a flight physical from an FAA authorized doctor. This physical just basically states that you're healthy enough to go fly by yourself. You should easily be able to get this done for less than $130. Lastly, the actual flight test itself. Notice how this wasn't included in the 40 hours of FAA minimums? Once you've completed all your training and you've proven to your CFI that you're ready to take that final FAA check, they're going to give you an endorsement and you will schedule a flight test with an examiner. To do this flight test, well, you're gonna to have to rent an airplane again. And that test should not be more than an hour and a half, but you might have to travel to the examiner's airport. So for this, I'm gonna add two hours of Cessna 172 rental at 190 an hour again. I know, I wish I was done too, but we still have to pay the examiner fee. Examiner fees were average maybe around $800. So the whole flight test in the end is probably gonna cost you $1,180. I know, we better wrap this up quick because these costs are adding up and I know this sounds expensive, but hang with me. I assure you, if you can pull this off, it is so worth it. Once you have your private pilot license, it will never expire. I've never met anyone that said, yeah, I really regret spending all the money to become a pilot. It totally wasn't worth it. It's not fun at all. Now, I've never heard that and I never will. But what I do hear often and I've heard for many years is, Dang, I wish I had done that long ago. I always wanted to, but I never took the steps to make it happen. Excuse, excuse, excuse. If you're still watching this video, you're the type that can totally accomplish this goal. You will be glad you invested in your future by learning to fly. 
All right, so let's total all these numbers up. An introductory flight, $150. FA minimum flight training, $9,850. Extra training to meet the standards required, $7,175. Ground school and the FA written knowledge test, $575. Supplies and a headset, $350. A flight physical, $130, and the final check ride, $1,180. That totals $19,410. And most likely, more than what you're finding on flight school websites. But that's the honest truth to what you might expect to pay when it's all said and done. Hopefully you're somewhere in this country where the airplane rental rates maybe are lower and you can get this down by a couple thousand dollars. Another thing you can do to get this price down is to be very prepared for each flight. In the words of my friend Chris, who's well respected in the pilot training world, the best way to minimize your cost is to study hard, show up on time, and be well prepared for each lesson. It's a simple yet profoundly true statement. You truly are a driving factor in your overall cost of training. If you take this seriously and you're well disciplined, you can get this done for less. Make sure your instructor lays out a plan for exactly what you'll be learning before each flight so you can spend time studying the right things. This actually could be a huge factor getting done quickly and for the least amount possible. The more frequently you can fly, the less time you'll spend reviewing the last lesson. Also, many of these supplies, you can buy them secondhand, used, or maybe even borrow them. Don't let the high price tag of flight training intimidate you. Get out there and take your next step. Enjoy every flight hour that you get to write in that logbook. It truly is the most rewarding learning that you're going to do in your life. At least it was for me, and I feel confident it will be that for you as well. Well, I hope this video helped you out. Send me a comment about your experiences so far with the cost of training or any other items you think students should be factoring in. Like this video if it helped you. Consider subscribing to our channel if you'd like to see more videos about learning to fly. See you in the next one. Thank you.